Morality and Baked Goods by Sky Silverwing Some might say that it was a confluence of magic. Others might declare it to have been the will of discord. Still more might claim that something in the baker herself was to blame. And some would state that it was something about the dough. Truly, it could have been any of these factors, or a combination of them. But however it happened, its end result was a strange event so unusual, it changed Ponyville forever. It all began on a sunny morning in Sugar Cube Corner. Pinkie Pie, the pinkest, most hyper, most curly-haired pony in town, was finishing with all of the baking that Mr. and Mrs. Caked asked her to do while they were off in Hooferville. A quick look in the pantry showed her one more large blob of gingerbread dough, enough for a bunch of mid-sized cookies. Next to the dough, there was a note. Dear Pinky, the note read, if you have reached this dough and have finished all of your tasks for the day, we really appreciate having you on as our assistant baker. This dough is actually some extra that we had on hand, so as long as you are done, you may have it and use it to make whatever you want. You've earned it. Mr. and Mrs. Cake. Pinky gave a happy squeal as she finished reading. Sure, she often got to bake whatever she wanted and eat most of it too but it was genuinely a joy to know that she had made Mr. and Mrs. Cake happy. The reward was just the icing on the cookie, so to speak. She picked up the cookie dough and took it into the kitchen, wondering what she could do with it. Enough dough for a bunch of medium cookies could make one or two really big ones, or a bigger bunch of little ones. A cookie was a cookie, but this one was going to be special. Mrs. Cake taught her long ago that the sculpting of a cookie and its decoration were as much an art form as planning parties. If you did not put your all into it, it would not come out so good. So Pinky focused her mind and pulled off a small bit of the dough, holding it on her hoof and looking at it. After a long moment, she laid the dough on the table and began working it into a shape. Ultimately, she settled on a stylized cat shape. Smiling at her creation, Pinky collected another, slightly larger lump of dough, producing a slightly larger, more detailed cat shape. After her third cat, Pinky took the remainder of the dough and began working like a pony possessed, creating a stylized cat of much greater size and detail than any of its predecessors, the result being the largest and most detailed cookie that Pinky had ever made. It, too, was a stylized cat, but it was much more well-made than the others. Had it been on the floor, on all four legs, it would have stood nearly as tall as Rarity's little sister. It had blue candy eyes, what would crystallize as it backed, and Pinky even added a stylized gothic Lolita dress. Pinky added a few details, and then pushed the four cookies into the oven to bake. At first, it was all darkness, warm and all-encompassing. Then the darkness was split by the light, and the Creator looked down upon her for the first time and reached in to draw her from the darkness. She was suddenly struck by the oddness of thinking of herself as one to be looked down upon or drawn from the darkness or even to think at all. Clearly she had begun to think at some point, but she really was not sure when. She became aware of three others, smaller than she, riding with her on the platform. She felt as if she were kindred to these others in some way, almost as if they were formed from the same whole. She knew not who they were, but she knew they were special to her. It was not until the Creator had drawn her out into the light that she became aware of how stiflingly hot the dark had been. The cool air and the light brushed over her skin, and she drew it in, breathing in the chill and letting the heat leave her body. She blinked. She had a body. 
She looked down at herself, finding it to be much like that of those who rode on the platform the creator was carrying with her. Her tail twitched slightly as she looked at her pretty dress and brown skin. Then the creator spoke. These are the best looking cookies I've ever made, the creator said. And it is like a family, four sisters. She absorbed this statement. So the others were called her sisters. And they were all called cookies. She loved her sisters and had a sense of deep connection to them. And she was the largest of them, so clearly she was the big sister. Then the creator reached down with a metallic implement and removed her from the platform. The creator smiled at her. All right, kitty, the creator said. I will decorate you first. So kitty was her name. Kitty smiled unnoticed by the creator as she looked over at her sisters, wondering what each of their names would be. The creator produced a strange tube with a nozzle on one end. First, a bit of frosting, she said. Kitty felt a tingle as the creator squeezed a white substance onto her skin, adding details to her and making her more. It felt so good, like being made whole. Then came a little bit of red frosting on her nose and mouth. Now that Kitty's smile was visible, the creator smiled back at her, and Kitty felt loved. Having finished the detailing, the creator set Kitty down and turned to the eldest of her younger sisters, slowly, one by one, speaking to each as she did. The creator removed each of Kitty's sisters and gave them each faces and names. The biggest of Kitty's sisters was Ginger, the middle one was Cat, and the smallest was Tiny. Kitty was happy to listen, absorbing the knowledge of the words the creator spoke and learning about her sisters. As the others joined her on what the creator called a cookie sheet, she felt closer and more connected to her sisters than she had ever been before. Then, disaster struck. As the creator moved Tiny from the table where the creator had been decorating her, a green thing appeared at the creator's feet. And in her attempt to avoid it, Kitty's littlest sister fell from her grasp, striking the floor with a devastating crunch, breaking the cookie's leg off. Kitty craned her neck to see as the creator bent down with a disappointed sigh. Aw, the creator said. Gummy, how many times have I told you not to get around my hooves in the kitchen? You made me break a cookie. She shuffled the thing out of the room and then returned inside and picked up Tiny. Oh well, I guess I will just have to eat this one first. With that, the creator tossed the injured cookie up into the air and caught it in her mouth, creating a terrifying crunching as she devoured her with Kitty looking on in horror. Kitty did not know what to think. Her youngest sister had done nothing to deserve such a fate. It was just so cruel and unfair. Suddenly the creator turned to look over the rest of the cookies on the plate, and her smile took on a new meaning. Kitty now could see the hunger, the vicious, voracious desire in the creator's blue eyes. A spike of fear shot through Kitty as she realized the terrifying truth. The creator intended to devour them all. Desperately, she thought, trying to figure out what to do. As their big sister, her little sisters were counting on her to find a way to escape the grisly fate that awaited them and get away from the one who had created them. Kitty was trying to figure out what to do when the creator reached for her second youngest sister. Kitty had never learned to move before, but to save her second sister, she flung herself at the creator's extended hoof. In that same moment, the plate 
bucked slightly as the creator's other hoof pressed on the edge of the plate. Whoops, the creator said in that deceptively jolly voice as she brushed off Kitty's desperate attempt to save her sister and shifted her back to the far side of the plate. Don't want to accidentally break this one before it's time to eat it, she said with a giggle. And then she scooped Cat up, licked her lips, and bit her head off. A shot of grief shot through Kitty as the creator devoured the remains of her second sister. It was a horrible and gruesome spectacle, crumbs and bits of frosting covering the creator's cruel pink hooves. Then the creator snagged up the last of Kitty's sisters. Kitty could not stand to watch as the last of her family was devoured. She finally found her voice. No! she cried. And with tremendous effort, born of desperation, she hurled herself at the creator's face. The creator gave a startled yelp and stumbled backward, falling over, and both Kitty's and the creator's eyes went to Ginger as she tumbled helplessly through the air, flipping end over end. And then, with a horrible crack, she struck the floor and shattered. Kitty stared at the remains of her sister, her heart broken. In moments she had gone from a big sister to all alone. It wasn't fair. It wasn't right. There was a clop of hooves behind her, and she turned to see the creator staring at her. Kitty did the one thing that came to mind. She had been unable to save her sisters, but she could certainly save herself. And so, she leapt to her feet and ran for the door. Fluttershy watched as her cute little possum friends played in the middle of a field not far from Sugarcube Corner. She was glad that Rainbow Dash had gotten up early to clear the clouds that morning, as it ensured that her friends had a sunny day and would not have to worry about getting startled by... Get back here, you cookie! A cat made out of gingerbread dashed through the group of possums, fleeing from a very cross-looking Pinkie Pie. The cat attempted to hide among the possums, but the possums, rather predictably, immediately stiffened and fell over playing dead as possums tend to do when they are startled. This left the cat, caught out, clearly visible to her pursuer. Pinky grinned maniacally. I've got you now, you tasty morsel, she said, looming over the gingerbread cat. Pinky Pie! Fluttershy was at her most assertive when it came to scared animals. What do you think you're doing? The yellow-furred pegasus stepped firmly between Pinky and her prize, fixing the pink pony with a glare that was not that short of her infamous stare. Pinky froze and backpedaled rapidly until she plopped down on her rump. 